Hey, welcome back folks. It is Siberian and in today's video I'm going to be going over something that happened with me in my Sentra recently as I went to go do an oil change for the car. Now, um, typically, you know, when I go and get oil changes done, I don't really do them in my garage. I usually just take the car to my mechanic and they kind of sort things out. And so uh, recently, you know, due to the whole kind of outbreak thing, I haven't been really wanting to go over to the mechanic to get the car serviced. So what I ended up doing is jacking up the car, you know, going in and, you know, doing the oil change as one would, um, just kind of trying to take off the filter. And what I found is that the filter was on there so tight that I simply just couldn't get it off. You know, I expected that maybe I'd be able to get it off by hand. Um, didn't end up quite happening. So what I ended up trying is I ended up getting a bunch of tools. So, you know, initially I had, you know, my kind of filter grips, which is like a wrench and grips around the filter tries to take it off basically by kind of mangling the metal, um, so that didn't work. Um, I tried, you know, sort of that regular cup that goes onto the, the filter as well, and tried to take it off that way, but the piece that I had was a really um, cheaply built one, which slipped quite a bit, and the reason why a lot of these actually slip is because mine just had the opening in the top. What you really want is you want a piece that extends out from the uh, filter cap itself, so that when you put in your wrench into it, it's got enough space there so that the actual part of the wrench that penetrates through doesn't end up, you know, kind of touching the filter and thus pushing the uh, cup back, which means that it effectively it slips more. But I didn't have one of those and I didn't have time to get it, so I ended up trying another tool. I ended up getting one of those um, kind of wrenches that has the rubber belt. So tried that, tried two of them. Still the filter wouldn't budge, just wouldn't go anywhere whatsoever. So, you know, I figured, okay, I'll try, you know, one of those clamping filters, which has that little metal loop then when you bend the um, the tool, it kind of clamps down more and more and supposedly helps you twist the filter off. Um, so unfortunately, that did not work either. So, you know, last but not least, I had the three-prong filter um, adapter to take it off, but unfortunately, even though those typically do work to get the filters off, mine was just a little bit too large for the filter, and again, I just didn't have the time to go and get it swapped out for something smaller. Um, now, there are tools out there such as an actual cup that goes over the filter and also grips and has got two kind of sliding um, giant prongs that you can use, but again, just due to lack of time, I wasn't able to get that. So, you know, I tried using the screwdriver trick where you basically poke a screwdriver all the way through and then use that to twist um, on the filter itself. Unfortunately, um, the filter material was so weak that basically the whole filter ended up getting shredded. Now, what I noticed when I was doing this, and I'm gonna try and see if I can balance this other part on here on my jeans, is that um, when I took the filter off and I mangled it completely, um, so this is kind of the remains of the filter here, there is actually a tool which can align to these you know, holes in here to allow you to take the filter off. And this would, if you know all the other methods have failed, this would ideally be your kind of best bet on um, getting the filter off. Because what I ended up actually doing is there is a stud that actually kind of threads onto the filter here. I don't know if I can actually demonstrate that. Maybe I can by seeing if this will go in. Unfortunately, the, the threads on this are so mangled because this thing was pretty much completely destroyed by my last mechanic. Um, so I don't know if I'll be able to actually get this aligned in here properly or not. But more or less it goes on like this. So what you'll see is um, essentially when you get to the filter, you'll see this kind of thing. Uh, where it's sitting on the stud which goes into your engine block. Now, luckily for me, this stud ended up having um, a pattern in here which allowed for um, essentially a 12 millimeter hex key uh, to go in there and I was able to basically unscrew that to get the filter out. Unfortunately, because of the way that the last mechanic tightened this whole thing, um, there are a lot of strip threads on this particular stud. Now. Typically, you don't want to um, use the hex key to remove this stud. Ideally, this is something that should just sit, you know, in your engine block, um, essentially just indefinitely. You never really want to mess with this thing. This is totally a last resort. Um, I'll link to the tool that actually allows you to take these filters off without having to mess with this guy. But I did want to make this video for those of you out there, um, you know, that do happen to uh, go through this problem with any kind of car, really. It doesn't have to be a central like mine. Um, but just in case you end up running into the issue where you really can't remove the filter, um, pretty much as a last resort, what you really want to do is you want to cut off everything, remove the actual filter portion of it, and then basically either, you know, end up using a hex key 
or um, you basically ideally want to get the tool um, from um, this aviation company that makes a specific um, kind of tool called a talon that has three little prongs that attach into these holes in here and then you're able to twist the filter off that way um, essentially it means that you're eliminating the possibility that you end up cross threading one of these studs or potentially damaging the studs anymore um, based on the fact that the filter was basically screwed on way too tightly by somebody previously and you know I know why sort of mechanic shops do this kind of stuff they don't want your car to just seize up because you know all the oil leaked out um, of your oil pan um, you know down the road because you're potentially gonna sue or you know most average consumers will kind of sue at that point um, but you know at the end of the day what you gotta realize is that if you do the filter change correctly and just put a little bit of oil um, on the gasket that goes between the filter and the engine block you're not gonna have any leaks a uh, small um, couple of motions just to hand tighten the filter is plenty um, to keep it you know from leaking and at that point you know it's got enough grip against the the engine that you're not gonna have uh, really any issues with it whatsoever the only um, kind of problem you might have is if you um, ended up putting the filter on in such a way that it was at an angle as opposed to straight on or you know if for whatever reason um, the gasket that came with the filter you either lost it or had to replace it with something that didn't quite fit those are really the only issues I can foresee with this kind of situation. Now, um, in my case, um, being that this is a B16 Sentra with the MR20DE engine, I ended up going online and getting a replacement stud. Um, the replacement stud that I got was actually supposedly for the uh, VR, I believe, or is it a VH37 engine? It's one of the engines from the 370Z, but they use the same stud, same thread pattern, doesn't really matter. Um, so, or I guess it's maybe the VQ engine. I always keep forgetting the, the actual engine model numbers for those cars, but the most important point is that you can get these replacement studs and they'll work in your car. Um, now, I don't know, you know, for those of you guys that have a different car, uh, what kind of studs you'll use, or even if they have, you know, a hex pattern in there to allow you to do this. But again, if they don't get that talon tool, that'll allow you to actually attach it to those little holes um, in the openings in the filter so that you can actually remove it that way. Um, as again as a last resort if the filter just refuses to come off any other way um, the easiest way I've seen online to kind of get to the filter without having to break out you know dangerous cutting tools is you can get one of those little cups that goes onto the end of your drill um, ends up making a hole so one of those things that you would use to put holes in like wood you know for example but you obviously want to get one that's actually made for cutting metal uh, basically you get that cup onto the filter as much as you can um, and then just basically use a drill to um, cut the opening as much as you can. If you can't use a drill, um, use a right angle air tool if possible um, to be able to cut into that filter to take out all the extra stuff. And from there on, you can just use the pliers to um, either break the filter apart or what you can end up doing um, potentially is if, again, you don't have any pliers or you have a long enough um, hex bit, you can just do that or have an extension uh, to get to this interior side to take things off. Um, so this has been like the easiest way I found to do this. Um, again, watch out for um, the way that you are um, unscrewing things because the last thing that you want to do is apply extra torque, um, especially if you have an aluminum block um, because this is a steel part so it can uh, really damage the threads that are actually inside the um, kind of casing that you know this lives inside of. So you want to be extremely careful um, that you're only going in reverse. You're not trying to tighten this thing down. Um, and when you do tighten it down, don't go you know too far again because you'll most likely end up damaging the threads inside. So this has been my adventure. Hopefully um, this kind of helps you guys out. Those of you that are doing this out there, um, and if you do have a Sentra, this is potentially useful information. Um, if you don't, again, just keep in mind that there are tools out there that exist, and I'll put the links to the ones. Um, that I recommend is specifically the Talon tool um, to be able to get your filters off uh, again because I use a whole bunch of tools that are supposed to work but didn't um, so hopefully it will help you out and help you get the filter off in your car safely so take care until the next video um, and hopefully I'll have some more information on the Sentra at that point